And good afternoon everyone and, and thank you for having us here and, and having a bit of a talk. Today what I want to have a wee talk about is how the catch cry of saving Kiwi in Taranaki has brought tiny rural communities together to make a difference. Kiwi is probably the one emotive word that galvanises us all. It's what we're known as, it's what we call ourselves and it's the one native species that we can all relate to. The decline of Kiwi in New Zealand is something that we've all become very familiar with. Through the media, it's become one of the key major conservation messages with a 5% survival rate of kiwis in many areas, or kiwi chicks. For many people, it's not that they don't care, it's more that they don't know how they can help. So we sit on the sideline and see our birds actually decline. The tiny area in East Taranaki called Purangi, which you can see where the blue mark is to give you a sense of where I'm talking about, in 2004 still had a very relatively strong Kiwi population. We discovered that we had Kiwi on our 197 hectare property out there. And that's where this story did begin. We were aware that the Department of Conservation had set up five strategic sanctuaries to save the Kiwis. And unfortunately the Kiwis in Taranaki were destined to just quietly become extinct. 2004, we decided that rather than watch this happen, we would actually develop a trapping program to help our Kiwi. We found that all our neighbours that are around us, every time we headed out there, they would stop us on the side of the road. How are your Kiwi? They'd say to us. They just had such an interest in it. They wanted to know more. A little more than a year later, we actually had a meeting in a public hall at Matau and all the locals came along. They wanted to do something about the Kiwi as well. By the end of 2005, our project had grown from our property to 11 properties and 3,000 hectares of land. We've had a network of traps that were set up in this area. Everyone suddenly in the community was talking about their Kiwi. And so it changed and it became an ownership. They suddenly became aware of what was causing the problems with these Kiwi. They owned them. And what it's done is changed the community and it's changed their farming practices. Instead of seeing scrub and bush as something to be cleared, they suddenly put a value on that scrub and bush. They felt they needed to save the bush and the scrub for their Kiwi. And it was just that change that was driven by the locals and the community. Landowners themselves suddenly decided to stop bulldozing things because they had to stop and think, hang on a minute, I've got a kiwi there. What am I going to do to that kiwi? So rather than go in there with bulldozers to clear fell, they would run around first to check on their kiwi. What was it going to do to their kiwi? Unfortunately, of course, the project then created bigger interest and the neighbouring communities all wanted to join. They were mindful of stopping kiwi before it got to the project and they all wanted to come on board with it. So we did a bit more work. During, up until 2009, we sort of did a lot of planning work. We then found that we grew. In 2009, our project became 13,000 hectares. In there, we've actually got a network. We've now got 1,300 stoke boxes, 1,000 permanent bait stations for possums, and periodic goat culling. This is meant for our trust that we've now actually got a wider focus. We're actually called, we consider ourselves to be a landscape ecosystem management. Kiwis become our indicator species. And it's actually a good process because it acknowledges that people are part of this process. It's not just about the environment, it's about the people that are also within there. Landowners became very good at looking at the new enemy, stoats, possums, feral goats. And they're on quite a mission. They're very single-minded about dealing to this for their Kiwi. The map that you can see on there at the moment just shows where the black outline is, is now where our Kiwi project is. And the red area that's in the middle of that is the last stage, which is to bring the kōkāko back. And it would be fair to say that the local landowners are very enthusiastic and, and are taking a great deal of pride in it. What comes up now you'll see is just a few photos of the community with their Kiwi.
meet the A-team. Up there we've got Alice, Anna, Alan, Aaron and Alex. Adrian, the oldest brother, is missing. This is one family. These group of kids for the last five years have been checking over 400 stoke boxes once a month. That's the next generation and that's awesome. For us, I guess, when we talk about the um, signs of change that this conference is about, our project's actually got two angles when we start to measure what our success is. For an environmental project, you've got to have some actual targets. The challenge with Kiwi, of course, is you can't run them through a set of yards and count them, and so it makes a real issue of how do we measure success. What we look at is biannual Kiwi call surveys. We measure the trend of success as to the increases of the calls that we're getting. More road sightings. I'd have to say that a fortnight ago we got our first road kill, um, an indication that we are getting a lot more Kiwi. We've got Kiwi signs on the side of the road. We have locals continually ringing us whenever they see a Kiwi that's on the side of the road. More Kiwi sign in the bush, that's being seen everywhere. So from the environmental side of our project, those are our measures. More importantly, I guess, is the community success. How do we measure that signs of change at the community success? The value of volunteer input. In the last 12 months, the value of that was $71,000, and that was from locals. They just are so positive about the project, and they're actually included and in input anything in there. Hill Country Farm Plans. And this is one of the huge key things that we've found. With Taranaki Regional Council, landowners themselves are going to get farm plans. What it does is evaluate sustainable farm practices on the land. Reduction of marginal country being cleared. We've got many farm owners who, through generational, have always had a what we'd call a scorched earth policy where you clear foul land. Now they're not doing that, they're stopping because they're thinking, hang on a minute, I need this for my kiwi. And so it's actually changed their farming philosophies, which is, you know, for us is really awesome. We're seeing an increase in Kiwi 2 covenants on bush. So they're actually valuing the bush for their kiwi. They have to save the bush for their kiwi. And so it's, it's actually generated quite a change in what they're doing. The locals are making a difference. Our project includes private landowners, Maori landowners, Kiwi groups, Māori Women's Welfare League, district councils, regional councils, central government and the people of Taranaki. For us, we actually make sure that we provide all the locals with a website so we keep them up to date with everything that's happening within the project, give them the information on the Kiwi they want, give them the information on the Stokes, which is very important, and we supply them with regular newsletters. We find that that just keeps them up to date. This is one of our local farmers who dropped everything one morning when he was going to be out docking because we were rehoming a kiwi, and that was more important than anything else. So there he was. Thank you.